Albert Einstein said something that I want you guys to remember, and I want you guys to write this down if you can real quickly. It says, those that understand interest are destined to earn it, while those that don't are doomed to pay it. And when you see what I got for you guys tonight, when I start showing you how banks get rich and why notes is such a great real estate investment tool, you guys are going to get excited. So first of all, the largest buildings in my neighborhood are the banks. They, ha they own the largest buildings. It's not the landlords. Almost all of the big buildings have a bank's name on the top of them. Most investors think that you know the real money made in the buying, the fixing, and the selling of houses. And if that's the case, then why doesn't any of these buildings have the rehabber's name on them? See, the money's in the financing, the paper, the note, the debt against the property. So how did the banks become the richest, most powerful institutions in the world? Simple. Take a look at your mortgage statement. For those of you that are buying a house, I know Canada's a little bit different than the United States, but they pretty much work the same. It's all the interest, and we all know that. We were taught that. We understand it. But the typical, conventional way is to get a mortgage, buy a house. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you start looking at the dollars, the interest that the banks make, you know, I think I'm going to get on the side of the bankers myself. So let's put a stop to the banks getting rich instead of... Us. So, I want you guys to say this, Terry, show me the money. It's always important. There it is. <laughs> That's the money. No, for us note buyers, it's in the uh, Truth and Lending Disclosure Statement. This is a note. This is what I look for as a note buyer. Some of you that are in the house market, you are more concerned with the house. This is what I'm concerned with. I want the note. The paper. So if you take a real close look at this, someone went out and financed $300,000 to buy a house. And they, you know, financed it at 6.75% interest. Over the life of this loan, they're going to make a total, if they paid all 30 years of this payment, they would make a payment, of, or excuse me, pay off $700,000, okay? And they're going to pay over $400,000 in interest and finance charge. And, and, and you want to look at that and go, wow, is this crazy? Yes, it is crazy if you're paying it, but if you're on the receiving side, like I am, and I like to be, and you're going to do the same thing as bankers and owning notes, this is wonderful. You know, I like that $400,000 of profit. I'm excited about it. Again, the finance charge, you borrow three hundred dollars and you end up paying $400,000 in finance charges. Take a look at this. On the first payment on that $300,000 loan, the monthly payment is $1,996. $1,750 goes to interest. Only $246 goes to the principal. 88% of the first payment goes to interest. That don't sound like 6.75 to me. <laughs> Sounds a lot higher. Think about it. Look down to where it says 240th payment. If you go all the way to the right, it's going to take you 20 years before you'll have half of the balance paid off. After 20 years, the person has paid over $340,000 in interest, which we'll call the bank's profit. That's interesting. So we need to start acting more like the banker instead of being on the other side of owning the property.